Now with our look at the top stories of 2013 with our panel, Jonah Goldberg, at large editor of National Review Online, Fox News media analyst and host of Fox's Media Buzz, Howard Kurtz, and of course, syndicated columnist Charles Krauthammer. So gentlemen, it's time for your picks for the top story of 2013, and uh, Howie, why don't you start us off? My pick is the NSA leaks. Now, Ed Snowden is still a fugitive in Russia. He broke the law. I'm not condoning what he did, but he fundamentally changed the debate around the world, really, about national security technology and privacy. The diplomatic fallout has been huge when we found out such things as the U.S., you know, listening in on Angela Merkel's phone calls. And I think that he kind of forced a public awareness of the magnitude of how much our government can listen and read even from emails to phone calls called almost Orwellian by one federal judge uh, who ruled against it. another federal judge has a conflicting ruling and that magnitude is staggering and we're, I think we I think we're not going to look at this issue the same way because we know so much more so how do we look at him uh, Michael Hayden former director of the NSA and CIA the other day on, on Sunday morning television said well you know my thoughts about him are sort of elevated and he came close to using the word traitor Right. Is he a traitor? Is he a whistleblower or something in between? Well, he certainly is a whistleblower in his own mind. And yet I think that he by running away from justice, he, you know, didn't want to face the consequences of his actions. I certainly as a journalist think that it was OK for the journalist to get this material and publish it. Uh, but I think the main thing about Snowden is that he um, he didn't hide behind the curtain of anonymity, which he could have. He did come out, make a video and say and put his name to it. But then he ran off and is still in Moscow. And Jonah, your top pick for story of 2013. Um, other than, of other course, than Obama. other than Obama, it's, it's actually very much related to how he's, uh, um, which I think is, you make a credible case for, is America's loss of standing in the world. Um, when you go, when you look at uh, the fact that the Saudis are basically thumbing us in the eye, um, you look at how basically how, how Vladimir Putin, as the kids say, drank Barack Obama's milkshake. Um, if you look across a wide spectrum of things, it is you have the, it, this, un, this almost Greek tragedy type irony where you have a guy who came in who was preemptively given a Nobel Pri Peace Prize for things that they expected him to do rather than things he actually did. And now it turns out, in part also for matters outside of his control, like the Snowden leaks, um, America's standing with our allies is, is arguably worse than it's ever been. Mm -hmm. Our standing in the Middle East, the respect that we have in the Middle East, um, the way he has wound down uh, the Iraq and Afghanistan wars may be politically popular at home, but it has not uh, sent a message around the world that we're to be feared or, or respected. And isn't this a president who came in as a candidate with, with the grand, some people might say grandiose idea of repairing America's image in the world? That was his whole shtick. You know, he, because he backpacked in Pakistan and pronounced it Pakistan, and because he, you know, he goes to Egypt and he gives this, what I argue was still one of the best speeches of his presidency. Um, that there was this whole idea that simply by virtue of being named Barack Obama and being African American, that this was going to have this fundamental transformation of and our getting, relationships. And getting a Nobel Peace Prize. And getting a Nobel After Peace Prize. Three days in office. <laughs> which was almost a practical joke. It was almost a cruel thing to do to Obama because it heightened expectations that he could never live up to um, even more. Uh, and that is the great irony here is that in a lot of ways, George Bush was probably hated more around the world, but he was also respected more around the world. Charles, your pick for 2013, other than Obamacare. Look, it has to do, I think, with a remarkable change in social attitudes, uh, generally speaking, libertarian. Uh, the, the swiftness with which uh, the attitudes have changed on gay marriage is simply astonishing. When you think that 20 years ago, Democrats were the ones who introduced Don't Ask, Don't Tell, and that was a progressive idea. A Democratic president signed the Defense of Marriage Act, which was essentially abolished this year, uh, to the cheers of Democrats and the fact that only five years ago the president said that he opposed gay marriage uh, because of religious reasons which of course now he's uh, rejected and he's uh, changed on that I think is an astonishing development but it isn't only with gay uh, issues it's also the legalization of marijuana and which, legal sales begin in Colorado tomorrow morning. Exactly. And a lot of people are hopping on planes and want to get there. Especially <laughs> a lot of 60s hippies who dreamed of a day when you could walk into a store. I mean, I'm not associating myself in any way with this. Of the You're just day an observer. You just know people. Ask. What time is your flight for Denver? <laughs> Denver? <laughs> you remember what they say, if you remember the 60s, you weren't there. Well, I was there and I don't quite remember that. You walk into a store now. Colorado and you can smoke but there's one exception here which I think is a story of the year culturally which is the opposite has happened on abortion and in part because of the Gosnell 
trial. Mm -hmm. The fact that people are becoming aware of how late-term abortions are, are so near to infanticide and also how the, the new technology, the ultrasounds, are giving people awareness of, the, uh, of how much an infant is developed in the womb. So and with, with everything else heading left on this issue, the, uh, the movement has stopped and I think reversed, especially among young people. It's an extremely interesting and unusual set of developments. So does this become an election issue then for the midterms? No, I'm not sure it does. I just think it's an issue sort of uh, in the change of our attitudes. It does mean that you would have predicted 20 years ago that if people who remain hardline on abortion, uh, anti the, the Supreme Court decision would be written out of our political arguments, but that's not the case. It's still a country split almost 50-50. It's in part a generational shift, and I think the public is ahead of the politicians on issues like same-sex marriage. 18 states have legalized it, and Republicans don't talk about it very much anymore, whereas it was a real culture wedge issue uh, back in 2004, for example. The one thing I was thinking you're leaving out there, though, is if you said 20 years ago that the country was going to get by today more pro-gay, more pro-life, and more pro-gun. Uh, guns were used, once considered a real wedge social issue that hurt the right. Mm -hmm. The country has moved decidedly libertarian on those, too. Let me just add on the libertarian switch how in Canada they're actually discussing the legalization of prostitution. <laughs> you and I remember Canada has sort of stayed white shoe and rather conservative. Rob Ford changed all of that. <laughs> <I'm afraid. laughs> he sure did. All right, let's leave it there. Coming up next.